When my foster daughter first came to live with us, the house was in chaos. Um, everybody was on pins and needles. We never knew when she was going to throw a tantrum. We could be sitting down watching television and all of a sudden she just explode. He was real agitated constantly. Uh, any little thing set him off. Uh, it was just so much anxiety and uh, you know, just, just so hard, like hard to get through the day. She would pull knives, um, any type of utensil, brooms, pots. He threw urine on a counselor. Uh, he would had a hard time sleeping at night. And he had a severe history of all kinds of trauma. They've been abused. They've been sexually assaulted. You really got to find out what it is that has traumatized them and try to figure out what's the best method to use to assist them as far as getting the assistance that they can live a productive life. What I'm most proud of is that her tantrums are zero now. And I don't think that if I was with trauma-informed care, it would have been this way, not this, not this soon. So trauma-informed care for our organization has meant that we've had much more effective interventions with kids. So many of us in the field have been waiting for a long, long time for something like trauma-informed care to come along. We've had the opportunity to learn from many of the premier experts who have been studying trauma and trauma's impact. And we have taken their wisdom, combined it with our own, to produce what we call our seven essential ingredients. The first ingredient is the notion that the prevalence of trauma is way more common than people care to acknowledge and or appreciate. Ingredient number two is the notion that the impact of trauma has the potential to change people physiologically. The third ingredient, we talk about going from a concept of what's wrong with you to what happened to you. They see a child that's being oppositional, that's arguing, maybe very aggressive, maybe hurts the family dog, and they don't understand well, we can help them understand. With trauma-informed care and the shift in our perspective of how we do things, now we will walk the person through it, find out what triggered this, and try to get a different perspective on what's going on with them to trigger these emotions. When a child goes through trauma, there's damage done to the brain. So by doing the rhythmic and repetitive activities, it actually helps develop the brain and develop those parts of the brain that have been traumatized. If stress is the big bad wolf and your lower brain is made of straw, when stress comes, you fall apart. But if we can use pattern repetitive activities and build your lower brain as a house of bricks, when the big bad wolf comes, we can stand firm and we don't melt down and have tantrums. All kinds of things work for this that are rhythmic, they're, they're very patterned, repetitive. The kids start to calm down. Well, when they calm down their brain, they're able to listen and learn. One of the best things that caregiver can do is represent to them that I am calm and you can also be calm. And when you combine that with some of these other techniques and ideas, uh, you have the magic that we keep describing. We had an 11-year-old boy come to St. Amelia Lakeside, and he had a severe history of abuse, physical, sexual, and emotional. We decided to implement trauma-informed care into his everyday activities, and as a result of that, he stopped being so aggressive and violent. He stopped destroying property. His overall demeanor changed completely. One of the most important things I found is the relationship, the relationship you form with the child through the trauma-informed care. There it is, there's the beginning of the trust and it might be the beginning of a different life for that child. Our sixth ingredient reason to be is about the idea that everybody needs a sense of purpose. I've gained a lot of self-discipline, self-control, 
and outside of like the martial arts class, I've been able to do things with other people I've never been able to do before. Anecdotally, I could share all kinds of stories about kids who have learned to regulate themselves, have had less episodes of aggression, which impacts how they feel about themselves and how they can manage their own stress level. None of this happens unless the caregivers providing this service are in a good place themselves. If we don't pay attention to them, then everything else won't work the way we want it to. When it's presented to police officers, to correctional folks, to educators, they all have a different perspective. And they all walk away with concrete ideas about how they can start to make a difference in the lives of the kids that they're working with. I mean, it's really been helpful to the staff because they want to do the right thing and they want to have the tools to do that. And it's changed their perspective. It's changed how they see the people they serve and how they can help create that relationship so that the child can heal. When you see those changes in a child, it makes you feel very good. Those are the stories that you'll never forget and makes you proud of doing trauma-informed care. The activities with the counselors, it just helps me out so much. It soothes my anxiety and calms down my irritableness. It hadn't been for them. I don't know where I would be right now with her. And I thank them for this. Please use trauma-informed care. It works. If you think about it, if we all become more trauma-informed, we will have a healthier community. Pretty remarkable stuff. It truly is. Mm -hmm.